A scissor lift is a mobile work platform that rises. The elevating mechanism consists of arms that connect in the middle like scissors, hence the name. They're a common sight on construction sites or in big warehouses. How it's made is on the up. The number of arms in the scissor mechanism varies according to the height of each particular model. The factory constructs the scissor arms from steel tubes. The first step is to cut them to the right length for the model in production. A worker uses an air gun to blow off the tiny shards of metal the cutting leaves behind. The arms go into a press that punches a hole for a hollow steel cylinder called a boss. The boss is the housing for a pin that will connect one arm to the other, yet still allow them to pivot like a pair of scissors. Workers now use a magnetic crane to move the arm to the welding area. They insert the boss into the hole, then tack it in place. This piece will go on the end of each scissor arm, but first, they weld on another boss. Now fully assembled, this piece is called the male scissor end. They tack it to one end of the scissor arm and tack a female scissor end to the arm's other end. Robots now weld the two end pieces simultaneously. Then the boss in the middle. Now workers stack the scissor arms, putting a pin in each middle boss. They also install the hydraulic lift cylinder that will raise and lower the scissor stack. This manifold activates the lift cylinder by increasing and decreasing hydraulic pressure. Workers fasten the connected scissor ends to each other by driving a pin through the boss. They secure it with a locking mechanism called a cotter pin. Meanwhile, other workers assemble the base of the scissor lift. At this stage, it's upside down. At the rear, workers bolt in a hydraulic wheel motor. Hydraulic pressure turns the motor, enabling the operator to move the scissor lift forward or backward. They slide a wheel onto a hub and bolt it securely. This is the wheel hub onto which the front wheels bolt. It attaches with a pin, blocked by a cotter pin. They install the hydraulic steering cylinder. This steel tie rod links the front wheels to each other, so that they turn together. Now, workers hook up the hydraulic hoses. They pump in grease to lubricate the cylinder. Next, they assemble and install the hydraulic tray. It contains the electrical panel that controls all the machine functions, as well as the hydraulic tank and pump. The pump forces hydraulic fluid to the wheel motor, steering cylinder and lift cylinder. The hydraulic tray swings closed under the base. On the other side, they install four 6-volt batteries that power the lift. The scissor stack, meanwhile, is in the paint booth getting a coat of primer, then a coat of urethane paint. This finish prevents the steel from rusting. After curing the paint in an oven, they install the scissor stack onto the base. Now they connect the two hoses that run between the lift cylinder and the hydraulic pump. Through one hose, fluid goes to the cylinder to raise the scissor. Through the other, fluid withdraws to lower the scissor. They run cables from the electrical panel up through the scissor stack. After installing a platform made of painted steel, they connect the cables to a control box on the platform rail. These controls enable a worker to operate the scissor lift from the platform. After a test drive, it's time to apply the decals. Up to 75 of them, depending on the model. And if you've got more than one, you can go in for a little synchronized scissor lifting. Nice!